let's move to the next set of collectives. So we are going to talk about reduce scatter and the dual of that is all gather. So how does reduce scatter work? So everybody has MP data, right? This is a reduce. So everybody has MP amount of data. Okay. And what you want to do is you want to find the element wise summation of these MP elements. And where do you want the result to be? You want the result to be scattered across all the nodes. What does it mean to be scattered? That means that the sum of the first M elements should be on node zero some of the next M element should be on node one and so on. Is that clear? So initially everybody had MP elements. You want to do element wise summation, right? So the final result is going to be of size MP and that's going to be scattered across the P node. So each node will have M elements. All right, so this is a little more interesting. How do you do this? Well, you can do recursive doubling. How do you do recursive doubling here? Is it obvious how you do recursive doubling? So broadcast, reduce, scatter, gather, all of these were based on something called the root, right? There was always a root involved, one node, which was either doing the scatter or doing the gather or doing the broadcast or where the reduce was available. That's not the case over here. So how do you do recursive doubling over here? Recursive doubling is kind of like a tree which starts from a root, right? So how do you do recursive doubling? You can choose a root yourself. Okay, and then what do you do? Okay, that's one way to do it. So if you want to use recursive doubling algorithm, one way to do it is combine reduce with scatter. Yeah, first reduce all the data on a single node and then scatter it to all the nodes, right? That works. And for reduce and for scatter, we know how to do recursive doubling. So what's going to be the cost of this? What is the cost of reduce? There were only log p stages in reduce, right? Broadcast, we analyzed broadcast. Log p times ts plus mtw. Okay, careful here. Here the message size is pm. We are doing a reduce of pm array size, right? Okay. And what about the second phase? ts log p. Yeah, plus, do you remember? We just did this, P minus one times MTW. So the total cost is about two TS log P plus P plus P minus one, two P minus one MTW. Okay. Now, the question is, is this optimal? Is this the best you can do? The answer is no. And let's see why. There's a very simple algorithm which actually does better than recursive doubling. All right, let's see what that is. So these are our nodes. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So let's assume we have a linear array, right? It will work for clique as well. So initially, everybody has m times 8 amount of data, 8m data, right? So let me just call it 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? So 2 also has this data. Right, and so on. So everybody has eight elements. Let's just assume M is of size one, right? So you just have eight elements. I mean, it works no matter what you take M to be, right? Okay. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to send the last item from zero to one. All right. And I'm going to send data 0 from 1 to 2, 1, 
टू थ्री फोर फाइव सेवन विल सेंड टू जीरो द डेटा नंबर सिक्स ओके इट कैन डू दैट राइट इट्स बाय डायरेक्शनल सो वेदर इट्स अ लीनियर एरे और इफ इट्स इफ यू आर कंसिडरिंग अ क्लिक राइट देर इज अ लिंक बिटवीन एवरी पेयर ऑफ नोट सो यू कैन सेंड इट राइट सो लेट्स अज यूम लीनियर एरे फॉर नाउ ओके so this is the first iteration what happens in the next iteration in the next iteration one is going to add the seventh element to its own data and forward it to node 2 yeah two has just received zero in the first iteration it will add its own zeroth element and forward it to node 3 yeah and one and two and three and four and five So do you see where this is going? What's going to happen in the next iteration? Okay, let's just trace one of these, right? Now you understand what's happening, right? The links that are being used for communication are independent, disjoint between any pair of nodes. Let's just trace what happens with data seven, right? So it went from zero to one. In the second iteration, it went from one to two. In the third iteration, it will go from two to three, right? this is in the third iteration in the fourth iteration it will go from 3 to 4 in the fifth iteration sixth iteration it will reach node 6 right and in the seventh iteration it's going to reach node 7 is that clear and similarly for all the data so after the seventh iteration what are you going to have and remember each node is adding its own data and forwarding it right adding its own data forwarding adding its own data forwarding right so when this data item 7 reaches node 7 it has the summation of all the nodes except for node 7 yeah node 7 can add it itself not an issue so at the end of the seventh iteration if you analyze this carefully what's going to happen is that data 0 is going to reside on node 0 1 on 1 2 on 2 3 on 3 and so on right and generalizing this to m elements the first m elements will reside on node 0 summed up over all the nodes the next m elements will reside on node 1 summed up over all the nodes and so on right so this is nothing but reduced scatter you have actually done a reduced scatter and what is the cost of this so how many iterations p minus 1 iterations yeah what is the cost of each iteration ts plus mtw is that clear so p minus 1 ts plus m times p minus 1 tw okay now is this better than or worse than the recursive doubling so this was the cost of recursive doubling and this is the cost of call it the ring algorithm yeah which one is better second one always so it depends on the relation between ts and tw right rather comparison of ts with mtw how does ts compare with mtw why because when you have large messages right the mtw term is going to dominate so which one will be better in that case right because most of the time you are transmitting the data the eventual code latencies are not going to be that high right the latency is not going to be that high so in that case this one will be better right and if you are dealing with very short messages mtw is going to be very small and your latencies will dominate your cost right in that case this will be better because it's just log p times ts this is p minus 1 times ts okay so actually in practice people use different algorithms for doing the collectives depending on whether it's large data or small data if it is small data people prefer to use algorithms which are good in latency right uh, such as recursive doubling and if it is very huge data they want to use algorithms which do better in terms of bandwidth okay all right so let's analyze this ring algorithm on a mesh 
Yeah, so how would you implement it on a mesh? So again, let's say you have root p by root p mesh. So how would you implement this uh, algorithm? So let's say this node wants to do the broadcast, right? Remember, we are trying to do reduce scatter. So here is what I do, right? I'll divide it into two parts. What I'll do in the first pass is I'll do a ring algorithm along all the columns. So initially, let's say this had the data for 0 to 15, right? It had the data for all of these. So first I'm executing the ring algorithm along the columns. In the second phase, I'm going to execute the ring algorithm along each row, right? The same algorithm that I just discussed. So initially everybody had the data from 0 to 15, right? What is the reduce scatter you're going to do in the first iteration when you're doing it along the columns? What do you want at the end of that? You want the data for 0, 1, 2, 3 to reside with all the top elements of each column, right? Because in the second phase, they are going to communicate this and at the end of that, you know, 0 will come here, 1 will come here, 2 will come here, 3 will come here. So what is the size of the reduce scatter that is happening in the first iteration, in the first part, in the first pass? So you're actually doing a reduce scatter of size root p times m. Right, that's the data that you will end up with on each node. Right, and there are root p nodes that you're doing this communication over. Right, root p is the nodes and this is the size of the collective, the amount of data that resides, right. And let's just plug it in into the algorithm that we had. So what was the cost? p minus 1 ts, so root p minus 1 ts plus m times p minus 1, m times p minus 1, root p minus 1. Careful over here, the data size will be root pm, right? Yeah, root pm into root p minus 1 into tw. Yeah, that's going to be the cost because I have to replace this m by root pm. That's the amount of data. And wherever I'm using p, I have to replace it by root p. Okay. And in the second iteration, what do we do? We are doing the communication along the rows. What is the size of that data now? Well, now we have root pm data at the beginning and at the end you have m data, right? So we are going to have again root p minus 1 ts and how much for the communication? So what is the size of the data? m times p minus 1, right? So what is m? This is m only. m times root p minus 1, tw. Okay? 